So uh, today we 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 observing the feast of dedication. Okay, the dissection of our enemies during the time of the Greece. So we're going to be going over that. The Feast of Dedication 2022. Okay. Let's give the Lord a hand. Okay. We made it to another feast. Okay. We made it to another feast. All praise to the Most High. All praises. Um, okay. You have a pen? Okay. Do you have your Bible? Okay. All praise to the Most High. All praises. Um, so let's open up with the book of John 8.32. Because what we need to understand that as a people, we don't know who we are. We don't know what the truth is according to the scriptures. So when, when Christ walked the earth, this is what he commanded us. This is what he said when he was with the disciples. Watch this. Read it. John chapter 8 verse 32. Read. And ye shall know the truth. And ye shall know the truth. Come on. And the truth shall make you free. And the truth shall make you free. So what Christ is teaching us that we're going to know the truth. And the truth is the only way. We are going to be delivered from captivity because we are slaves this day. We are still at the bottom of all nations. We are still catching hell. We are still oppressed, depressed. Now, Christ said what? Read that again, verse 32. John chapter 8, verse 32. Read. And ye shall know the truth. And you shall know the truth, you Israelites, the 12 tribes of Israel. Come on. And the truth shall make you free. And the truth will set us free. The truth is going to allow us to go back to our homeland and rule the earth as in the days of old. Verse 36. Come on. Verse 36. Come on. If the Son therefore shall make you free. If the Son of God therefore shall make you free. Come on. Ye shall be free indeed. We are going to be free indeed. We are going to be back to our homeland. Give me Galatians 4.26. Let's understand where our homeland is. Our homeland is not the cradle of humankind. No, no. Our homeland is Jerusalem. Okay. Read that. Galatians 4.26. Galatians chapter 4 verse 26. Read. But Jerusalem which is above is free. No, South Africa. But Jerusalem, which is above is free. Jerusalem, which is above is free. Jerusalem is the top government on earth. Right now, it doesn't look like that because the 12 tribes of Israel, we are scattered among all nations as slaves. Read that again. Galatians chapter 4 verse 26. Read. But Jerusalem, which is above is free. But Jerusalem, which is above and is free. So Jerusalem, Jerusalem, in the future, when the Lord returns, we are going to be above all nations, and we are going to be free indeed. Go ahead. Which is the mother of us all. Because Jerusalem is our motherland. That's where we come from. You understand? We are Jerusalem. When you're looking out here, this is Jerusalem. Jerusalem is a people before it's a place. Second Ezra 10 verse 44. Let's get that real quick. Jerusalem is a people before it's a place. We need to understand that. Because as a people, we are lost, we are confused. We don't know who we are. We don't know who our forefathers are. But this day, the Lord, the Spirit of the Lord upon us, now we remember who we are. We bethink ourselves. Read it. Second Ezra, chapter 10, verse 44. Come on. This woman whom thou sowest. This woman who you see. Come on. Is Zion. Is what? Is Zion. Is Zion. Zion is another name for Israel. Israel. Come on. And where she said unto thee, even she whom thou seest, as a city builder. So this woman transformed into a city. Because the Jerusalem is a people before it's a place. Understand that. We are the 12 tribes of Israel. And we are back on this earth. Regenerated. We understand. We remember who we are. The spirit of the Lord is upon us. to restore us back to honor. Understand that. Go back to John 8.36 again. John chapter 8 verse 36. Come on. If the Son therefore shall make you free. Read. Ye shall be free indeed. When the Lord returns, we are going to be free indeed. No more captivity. No more slavery. No more oppression or depression. Understand that thing. Give me that in Lamentations 4 verse 21. When the Lord returns, no more captivity. Okay? No more oppression. Read what you got. Lamentations chapter 4 verse 21. Great. Rejoice and be glad, O daughter of Edom. He says, Rejoice and be glad, O daughter of Edom. The Greeks, the Romans. Read. That dwellest in the land of Uz. That dwelleth in the land of Uz. Read. The cup also shall pass through unto thee. The, the cup of judgment will, will pass also unto them. Because just as we are oppressed right now, we are at the bottom of all nation catching hell. Guess what? We, we're serving a just God. The most high God is a just God. All the things that the nations have done to us, they're all going to pay for what they've done. Because it's called justice. Read. Thou shall be drunken and shall make thyself naked. They're going to be drunken. They're going to make themselves naked. Meaning what? Shameful. Read. 
the punishment of thine iniquity is accomplished. The punishment of their iniquity will be accomplished. The punishment of our iniquity is when it's accomplished, guess what? The other nations, they're also going to drink out of the cup that we drink out of. Read. O daughter of Zion. O daughter of Zion. So meaning what? These curses that we're under, this judgment that we're living under, which is because of the breaking of God's laws, is going to come to an end. We're not going to be in slavery forever. We're not going to be oppressed forever. Read. He will no more carry thee away into captivity. We are no longer going to go into slavery. That's what the Lord is saying here. Read. He will visit thine iniquity. He is going to visit the iniquity of Edom. Come on. O daughter of Edom. You see that thing? Edom will be visited when we get our kingdom back. Read. He will discover thy sin. He's going to, going to discover their sin because how? The prophets are back. We're teaching the Bible as it is written. We're teaching our people who they are. That we are not Tongas. We are not Peris. We are not Bantus. We are the 12 tribes of Israel according to the Bible. That God is a black man. Jesus Christ is a black man, according to the Bible. Okay? Go back to John 8, 36. Read it. John chapter 8, verse 36. Come on. If the Son therefore shall make you free, if Christ therefore shall make you free, the Son of God. Read. He shall be free indeed. We are going to be free indeed. We're going to go back to our homeland. Jerusalem, which is above and free. On that day, we are going to be above and we are going to be free. That's what we're reading here. Okay, now let's get into the Feast of Dedication. Because today, today's topic is Feast of Dedication, War Before the War. Feast of Dedication, War Before the War. Okay, John 10, 22. Let's start there. John chapter 10, verse 22. Come on. And it was at Jerusalem. It was at Jerusalem, come on. The Feast of the Dedication. The Feast of the Dedication. The Feast of the Dedication is a celebration. It's the holy celebration that the Lord gave unto us. He commanded us through our forefathers to observe this glorious feast. Okay? The feast of the dedication. Celebration of the destruction of our enemies. Okay? Read again, verse 22. George, the 10, verse 22. Read. And it was at Jerusalem, the feast of the dedication. The feast of the dedication, which is what we're celebrating right now. Read. And it was winter. It was winter. Okay, come on. And Jesus walked in the temple in Solomon's porch. So Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, he celebrated the feast of the dedication. He observed that glorious feast. So guess what? Jesus Christ, he was fully aware of all the high holy days that God ordained unto us, the 12 tribes of Israel. Okay? So guess what? Christ read the Old Testament. Give me that in 1 Peter 3 verse 1. The Second Peter, Second Peter 3 verse 1. Because the Apostle Peter, he gave us this day. This is what he commanded us. Okay, Second Peter, chapter three, verse one. Watch this. Second Peter, chapter three, verse one. Because Christ was in the Old Testament. Come on. This second epistle, mm -hmm. beloved, I now write unto you, in both which I stir up your pure minds by way of remembrance. So the apostle Peter says he's stirring up our pure minds by way of remembrance. Remembrance of what? Read. Really? That ye may be mindful of the words which were spoken before. By the holy prophet. You see what he's saying? He says, we need to be mindful of the words that were spoken by the prophets that came before us. Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Nahum, Habakkuk, okay, Moses, Nehemiah, Joshua. Those were the prophets of old, okay? So the apostle Peter is reminding us during the time of Rome, you understand, that we must not forget the Old Testament. The Old Testament writings, because our history is in there. You understand? Our salvation is written in there. We get to understand who we are according to the Bible. Read again verse 2. Second Peter chapter 3 verse 2. Come on. That ye may be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets and of the commandment of us, the apostles of the Lord and Savior. You see what he's saying? So he says, be mindful of the words of the prophets of old. Meaning what? The Old Testament is not done away with. The Old Testament, the only thing that we don't do that is in the Old Testament is what? Is the law of animal sacrifice. We're no longer under that. Okay? And the laws that pertain to the temple. Because the temple is no longer standing. The temple was destroyed in 70 AD. You understand? By Titus and Vespasian. The abomination of desolation. Okay? Now watch this. Romans 15 verse 4. We must always be mindful of the words of the prophets of old. Read. Romans chapter 15 verse 4. Come on. 
For whatsoever things were written aforetime. The whatsoever things were written aforetime by the former prophets. Read. Were written for our learning. They were written for us to learn. You understand? The words that were written by the pro the law that are written in the law and in the pro by the prophets, they are written for us to learn. Read. That we, through patience and comfort of the scriptures, through patience and comfort of the scriptures, read, might have hope. Might have hope. So we're only going to find our hope and comfort in the scriptures. You're not going to find hope and comfort in politics, in Christianity, you understand, in democracy. You're not going to find hope and comfort in that. Because why? That is not what the Lord gave unto us. God gave us law, statutes, and commandments, and that's the reason why we're at the bottom of all nations right now. But we come coming back. The Spirit of the Lord have mercy upon us. Daniel chapter 8 verse 14. Okay? Daniel 8 verse 14. The prophets of old, like the prophet Daniel, he prophesied about what? The Feast of ded the Dedication. Watch this. Read it. Daniel chapter 8 verse 14. Come on. And he said unto me, unto 2,300 days, then shall the sanctuary be cleansed. Read that again. Daniel chapter 8 verse 14. Read. And he said unto me, and to 2,300 days, then shall the sanctuary be cleansed. So now, what we just read in, in John 10, 22, about the Feast of the Dedication, Daniel here is prophesying about the Feast of the Dedication because this is what during the time of Babylon, okay? This was during the time of Babylon, before the Greeks, okay? So now, Daniel is prophesying that it's going to take, for 2,300 days, our temple is going to be polluted. Our temple will be polluted by the Greeks, okay? And we're going to need to cleanse our sanctuary. That's what the Feast of Dedication is about. Cleansing our sanctuary. Cleansing our temple, okay? So, at the time when the, our temple was polluted, write it down. It was what? From 171 BC to 165 BC. That's when our temple was polluted, okay? Read again. Daniel chapter 8 verse 14. Read. And he said unto me, and to 2,300 days, then shall the sanctuary be cleansed. You understand? Then shall the sanctuary be cleansed. Meaning, after 2,300 days, then we're going to be able to be in a position to cleanse our sanctuary. Meaning what? The Lord would have prepared us for war, to get fight with our, for fight against our enemies, to push them out so we can be able to cleanse our sanctuary and sacrifice again, because we're still under the law of animal sacrifice back then. Okay, watch this. Second Maccabees, chapter 1, verse 18. Second Maccabees. The feast of the dedication is about what? Cleansing the temple, destroying our enemies, so we may be able to communicate to the Most High again. Second Maccabees 1, verse 18. Read. Second Maccabees, chapter 1, verse 18. Come on. Therefore, whereas we are now purposed to keep the purification of the temple. To do what? To keep the purification of the temple. To keep the purification of the temple. That's what the Feast of Dedication is about. The purifying of the temple that was polluted for 2,300 days by the Greeks. You understand? Read. Upon the 5th and 20th day of month Kaslu. Upon the 5th and 20th day of month Kaslu. Month Kaslu is today what we know as December. The 5th and 20th day of month Kaslu. That's where we're at now. Go ahead. We thought it necessary to certify you the rough uh -huh. that you also might keep it. Read. As the feast of the tabernacle. As the what? As the feast of the tabernacle. So we're supposed to observe the feast of the dedication as the feast of tabernacles. So you need to know the history of Israel to understand what is the feast of the tabernacles. Let's go to Leviticus 23 real quick. Let's read about the feast of the day, the feast of tabernacles, okay? The which we celebrated in September, okay? Leviticus chapter 23 verse 39. Watch this. Leviticus chapter 23, verse 39. Read. Also, in the 15th day of the seventh month. Of the seventh month. Come on, which is September. Read. When ye have gathered in the fruit of the land, uh -huh. ye shall keep a feast unto the Lord seven days. Ye shall keep a feast unto the Lord seven days. The Feast of Tabernacles is a seven-day seven celebration, just as the Feast of Dedication is seven days. Go ahead. On the first day shall be a Sabbath. On the first day is a Sabbath, just like on the first day of the Feast of Dedication, it was a Sabbath. Come on. And on the eighth day shall be a Sabbath. And on the eighth day, on the closing of the Feast of the Tabernacles, is a Sabbath. Read. And ye shall take you, on the first day, the boughs of goodly trees. Read. 
Branches of palm trees. Branches of palm trees, come on. And the boughs of thick trees. Uh -huh. And willows of the brook. Right. And ye shall rejoice before the Lord your God. So, so now the Lord is, is commanding us what we need to do on the feast of the tabernacles. This, this as we're supposed to know. Once we know how to celebrate the feast of tabernacles, we know how to celebrate the feast of the dedication. Read. And ye shall keep it a feast unto the Lord. You shall keep it a feast unto the Lord. Seven days in the year. Seven days in a year. Come on. It shall be a statute forever in your generations. Read. You shall celebrate it in the seventh month. You shall celebrate it in the seventh month. Come on. You shall dwell in booths seven days. You shall what? You shall dwell in booths seven days. We shall dwell in booths seven days. Booths is tents. That's why we have tents here. The Lord commanded us that we must dwell in booths. Okay? We must dwell in booths. And that's what we did. We slept in booths in honor of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and for the Lord delivering us out of the land of Egypt from the hand of Pharaoh, from the iron furnace. Read. All that are Israelites born shall dwell in booths. Uh -huh. That your generations may know. That your generations may know, meaning your sons and your daughters. That's why we have children here. So children no longer celebrate that demonic custom called Christmas because that's not our culture. The Lord did not command us to celebrate Christmas. He gave us the Feast of the Dedication. He gave us the Feast of Tabernacles to celebrate what he did for us. Read. That your generations may know that I made the children of Israel to dwell in booths. You see, even the, even, even the newborn is, is excited. She's laughing about this day. This is a glorious day, brothers and sisters. Go ahead. When I brought them out of the land of Egypt. When the Lord delivered us out of the land of Egypt. The reason why we slept in booths or in tents is because... The most High God says we must celebrate it. Why? Read verse 43 again. Leviticus chapter 23 verse 43. Come on. That your generations may know Read. that I made the children of Israel to dwell in booths. That the generation, our generations may know that the Lord made the children of Israel to dwell in booths. Read. When I brought them out of the land of Egypt. When he delivered us out of the land of Egypt. Read. I am the Lord your God. I am the Lord your God because he is the Lord our God. Read. And Moses declared unto the children of Israel the feast of the Lord. You see that? So now, that's why we have tents behind us. Now, let's go back. Second Maccabees 1, verse 18 again. Second Maccabees chapter 1, verse 18. Come on. Therefore, whereas we are now purposed to keep the purification of the temple, uh -huh. upon the five and twentieth day of the month, Kaslu, Ray. we thought it necessary to certify you the wrath, come on, that ye also might keep it as the feast of the tabernacle, as the feast of the tabernacles, like we read in Leviticus the twenty-third chapter, come on, and of the fire which was given us when Nehemiah's offered sacrifice. Uh huh. Come on. After that, he had built the temple and the altar. After that, he had built the temple and the altar. Now, guess what? We rebuilding the temple now. The spiritual temple, we rebuilding it. And after we rebuild the temple, we dedicate the temple. You understand? How we dedicating the temple now? We Give me that in Sarah 35 and 1 real quick. This is how we dedicate into the temple now. Okay? Sarah 35 and verse 1. Ecclesiastes chapter 35 verse 1. Read. He that keepeth the law bringeth offerings enough. He that keeps the laws of God, that's the offerings, that's enough offerings the Lord is looking for. Keeping of the commandments. Come on. He that taketh heed to the commandments. He that keeps taketh heed to the commandments of the Most High God. Read. Offereth a peace offering. You see that thing? Us keeping God's commandment, observing the feast of dedication. Guess what? We are doing what? We are offering a peace offering. Read. He that requireth a good turn, offereth fine flour. Read. A good turn is what? You returning back to the laws of God. <laughs> you returning back to keep God's commandments in the faith of His Son, the Christ. Read. And he that giveth alms, sacrifices praise. You see that thing? Alms deeds. That's what the Lord is looking for. For us to labor and be in pain in this truth to bring forth Zion. Okay? Now, give me the book of 1st Maccabees chapter 4. Because remember, during the time of the Greeks, 2,300 days our temple was polluted. After that, we had to what? We had to purify the temple. Okay? Give me that in 1st Maccabees 4.41. First Maccabees chapter 4 verse 41. Come on. Then Judas appointed certain men to fight against those that were in the fortress. Read. Until he had cleansed the sanctuary. Until he had done what? 
until he had cleansed the sanctuary. So Judas is Judah Maccabee, okay? One of our forefathers. He's the one that was leading the charge to fight against the Greeks so that we can what? We can cleanse the sanctuary and sacrifice again. Read. So he chose priests of blameless conversation. He chose priests of blameless conversation. What we need to understand is that, read verse 40, 41 again. First Maccabees chapter 4 verse 41. Come on. Then Judas appointed certain men to fight against those that were in the fortress. You see that? He says Judas appointed certain men to fight, to fight, to fight against those that were in the fortress. You understand? Meaning the Greeks and our people that joined with the Greeks to destroy and defile our temple and to keep it defiled. Read. Until he had cleansed the sanctuary. Until he had cleansed the sanctuary because that was the mission, to cleanse the sanctuary. Because the, because the temple was polluted, guess what? We needed to fight them off in order for us to go back to the temple, to clean it out, and so we can sacrifice again. Read. So he chose priests of blameless conversation. So he chose priests of blameless conversation. Because guess what? When it comes to cleansing of the temple, we must be blameless in the sight of the Lord. We here, we all here to cleanse our temples. Our body is our living sacrifice now. We are the temple of the Lord. We must cleanse ourselves. You must self-examine. You must understand that you cannot sit in the congregation. You are in the midst of sin, but you don't want to sit down and examine and repent and get your mind right. You understand? You will not get the kingdom like that. We all have to sit down and examine ourselves. Look at the man and the woman in the mirror. You understand? And be honest with ourselves. Read. Such as had pleasure in the law. Because guess what? Those priests had pleasure in the law. They love the laws of God. They find pleasure in keeping God's commandments. Read. Who cleansed the sanctuary. Because only they could cleanse the sanctuary. They were qualified to cleanse the sanctuary. Come on. And bear out the defiled stones. And they, they, they put out the defiled stones. Read. Into an unclean place. You see that? Into an unclean place. This is what they did. Because why? They fought for the nation. They fought for the sanctuary. Now watch this. What we need to understand is that our enemies had defiled our temple. So now we're celebrating the Feast of the Dedication. You understand? To celebrate the Most High God putting the Spirit on our forefathers to fight our enemies off. So right now we're celebrating deliverance and destruction of our enemies. Deliverance from our enemies and deliverance and destruction of our enemies. That's what the Feast of Dedication is about. You understand? The Most High has given us that grace period to do that thing in the lens of our captivities, rehearsing the righteous acts. Okay, read the verse again. Verse 43, come on. First Maccabees chapter 4, verse 43. Read. Who cleansed the sanctuary. Who did what? Who cleansed the sanctuary. That's what today is about. Come on, this whole week is going to be about that. Read. And bear out the defiled stones into an unclean place. Into an unclean place. Now watch this. Give me the book of Psalm 74, verse 1. Because what we need to understand is that, you know, before we get there, give me Second Peter 3. Read verse 1 again. Go back there. Second Peter, okay, chapter 3, verse 1. Because the Apostle Peter warned us about this thing, okay? He reminded us, in fact. Read it. Second Peter, chapter 3, verse 1. Come on. This second epistle, beloved, I now write unto you, in both which I stir up your pure minds by way of remembrance. By what? By way of remembrance. By way of remembrance, come on, meaning we must what? We must not forget. What must we not forget? Read. That ye may be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the Holy Prophet. You see that? He says we must be mindful of the words that were spoken before by the Holy Prophets. Jeremiah, Daniel. Okay, read. And of the commandment of us, the apostles of the Lord and Savior. He's letting you know the, the apostles, what were they teaching? The apostles were teaching the commandments of the Most High. That is what they were teaching. The commandments of the Most High God. So he says, we must not forget the words that were spoken before by the holy prophets. Now we're going to get into that. Give me that in Psalm 74. You know what? Hmm. Give me Acts 2, verse 29. Acts 2, 29. We must not be, we must always be mindful of the words that were spoken before by the mouth of the holy prophets. Read it. Acts chapter 2, verse 29. Come on. Men and brethren, mm -hmm. let me freely speak unto you. Of the patriarch David. Of our forefather King David. Come on. That he is both dead and buried. Read. And his sepulchre is with us unto this day. Go ahead. Therefore, 
Being a prophet. Being a what? Being a prophet. Being a what? Being a prophet. King David was a mighty prophet. Okay? Was a mighty prophet, our forefather. He says, therefore, being a prophet, come on. And knowing that God has sworn with an oath to him. Okay, read. That of the fruit of his loins. Of the fruit of his loins, come on. According to the flesh. According to sex, read. He would raise up Christ. He will raise up Jesus the Christ, the black Messiah, come on. To sit on his throne. To sit on his throne. King David was a what? Was a mighty prophet. Now give me Psalms 74 verse 1. He was a mighty prophet, okay? So we're going to go into the details of the Feast of Dedication in prophecy. Watch this. Read it. Psalms chapter 74 verse 1. Come on. Oh God, why hast thou cast us off forever? Because King David is praying in the spirit. You understand? He's praying in the spirit. He's prophesying. He's why hast thou cast us off, for, off forever? Because during the time of King David, the Lord did not cast us off. So King David is prophesying. Okay? Read again. Psalm chapter 74 verse 1. Read. Oh God, why hast thou cast us off forever? Actually, this is uh, Asaph. This is Asaph here. He's prophesying. Go ahead. Why does thine anger smoke against the sheep of thy pasture? You see, he's asking. He says, why does thine anger smoke against the sheep of thy pasture? Who's the sheep of the Lord's pasture? Give me that in Matthew 15, 24. Let's see who is the sheep of the Lord's pasture, okay? Because during the time of Asaph, was during the time of King David. We were not in captivity. The Lord did not cast us off forever during that time, okay? Read. Matthew chapter 15, verse 24. Come on. But he answered and said, Read. I am not sent, but unto the Lord's sheep of the house of Israel. Read that again. Matthew chapter 15, verse 24. Come on. But he answered and said, Read. I am not sent, but unto the Lord's sheep of the house of Israel. He says, I am not sent, but unto the Lord's sheep of the house of Israel. The Lord's sheep of the house of Israel. That's the sheep of the Lord's pasture. The house of Israel. Okay? Go back to Psalms now. 74 verse 1. Watch this. Psalms chapter 74 verse 1. Great. This, remember, these are the Psalms of David. That's why we went to Acts 2, 29 and 30. Because King David was a mighty prophet. We're reading about the Psalms of David. Okay? Which Asa played. Read. Psalm chapter 74 verse 1. Come on. Oh God, why hast thou cast us off forever? Read. Why does thine anger smoke against the sheep of thy pastor? Read. Remember thy congregation. He says, remember thy congregation, O Lord. You understand? He's prophesying in the future here. He's prophesying what will happen to Israel in the last days. Read. Which thou hast purchased of old. Which thou hast purchased of old from the time when we were delivered out of Egypt. Read. The rod of thine inheritance. Uh -huh. Which thou hast redeemed. This Mount Zion. This what? This Mount Zion. This Mount Zion. That's the congregation of the Lord. Mount Zion. Come on. Wherein thou hast dwelt. Wherein the Lord has always dwelt. In Mount Zion. His congregation. Joel chapter 2 verse 27. Okay. Give me Joel 2. Watch this. This Mount Zion. Which thou hast dwelt. Read it. Joel chapter 2 verse 27. Uh-huh. And he shall know. That I am in the midst of Israel. He shall know that I am in the midst of Israel. Come on. And that I am the Lord your God. I am the Lord your God. He says he is in the midst of Zion. His congregation. And he is the Lord our God. Come on. I am the Lord your God and none else. He's not the God of all nations on earth. That's what we need to understand. Like they lied to us ever since we grew up. Ever since we were born on this earth. We've been told a lie that the God, the most High God of heaven and earth. He is the God of all nations on earth. That's not in the Bible. Read again verse 27. To world chapter 2 verse 27. Read. And he shall know that I am in the midst of Israel. He is in the midst of Israel. Read. And that I am the Lord your God. He is the Lord our God. The God of the Israelites. Read. And none else. And none else. Come on. And my people shall never be ashamed. God's people is the Israelite. We shall not be ashamed when we repent and come back to our true identity. Our true nationality, that we are the biblical Israelites that the Bible speaks of. Okay? Now go back. Go back to the book of Psalms now. Psalm 74. Read verse 2 again. Psalms 74 verse 2. Read. Remember thy congregation. Remember thy congregation. Mount Zion. Read. Which thou hast purchased of old. Read. The rod of thine inheritance, which thou hast redeemed. This Mount Zion. Wherein thou hast dwelt. This Mount Zion wherein the Lord has dwelt. 
Give me that in First Chronicles 28 verse 8. Okay? Let's hone in on this because we need to understand the Lord's congregation is Mount Zion, which is another name for Israel. Okay? Read that. First Chronicles 28 verse 8. First Chronicles chapter 28 verse 8. Come on. Now therefore, in the sight of all Israel, in the sight of all 12 tribes of Israel, come on, the congregation of the Lord. The what now? The congregation of the Lord. So Israel is the congregation of the Lord. The 12 tribes of Israel, we are the congregation of the Lord. Read again verse 8. First Chronicles chapter 28 verse 8. Come on. Now therefore, in the sight of all Israel, in the sight of all the 12 tribes of Israel, read, the congregation of the Lord, come on, and in the audience of our God, mm -hmm. keep and seek for all the commandments of the Lord your God. We must keep and seek for all the commandments of the Lord our God. Read. That ye may possess this good land. That we may possess the good land, the land of Israel, Jerusalem, which the nations are fighting against right now. Read. And leave it for inheritance for your children after you forever. You see that thing? So that land of Israel has never been the land of all nations. Has never been the land of the Arabs. Has never been the land of the people that call themselves Jewish. That's not their land. That's the land that the Lord promised unto our forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Right now, we cannot go back to our homeland. Not yet. Why? Because as Israel, we are scattered among all nations on earth, and we are slaves. We are oppressed. We are depressed. You understand? We are at the bottom. But the Lord says, I'm going to wake you up. I'm going to send the prophet Elijah in the last days. He will wake up the children. And right now, you see the children waking up. You see sons and daughters out here preparing for war, a spiritual warfare. Because this is not going to be a physical fight. Understand that. Okay. Go back. Psalms chapter 74, verse 3 now. Come on. Psalms chapter 74, verse 3. Read. Lift up thy feet unto the perpetual desolation. So now he's saying, lift up thy feet unto the perpetual desolations. What are the perpetual desolations? Zion. Okay, come on. Even all that the enemy has done wickedly. You see that? Even all that the what? Even all that the enemy has done wickedly uh -huh. in the sanctuary. You see that thing? The perpetual desolation is the sanctuary. You understand? Our temple that was desolate, that was polluted. That's what he's talking about. He says, even all that the enemy has done wickedly in the sanctuary. So our enemy has done wickedly in the sanctuary. That's why we had to cleanse the temple after 2,300 days. That's what the Lord is saying right there. Okay? Watch this. Give me Daniel 11 verse 27. Because what, what, what we're reading here, guess what? This is the Psalms of David by Asaph. Watch this. Daniel chapter 11 verse 27. Daniel chapter 11 verse 27. Read. And both these kings' hearts shall be to do mischief. Uh-huh. Go ahead. And they shall speak lies at one table. They shall speak lies at one table to do what? To destroy us. To pollute our sanctuary. You understand? Which in which we had to cleanse. Read. But it shall not prosper. It shall not prosper because there's going to come a time where the Lord is going to raise up prophets and warriors and leaders to cleanse the, the sanctuary. So we as Israel, we can go back to the temple, cleanse it up, and sacrifice again so the Lord can hear our prayers. Read. For yet the end shall be at the time appointed. You see that? The end shall be at the time appointed of the Father. Okay? That's it on that. Go back now. Give me Daniel 9, 27 now. Okay? Daniel 9, verse 27. Daniel chapter 9, verse 27. Read. And he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. He shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. Okay? A period of time. Read. And in the midst of the week, in the midst of this week, the period of time he gave unto us, he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease. So now, remember, the enemy that will pollute the sanctuary, they're going to cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease. Meaning, we are no longer going to be able to sacrifice in our temples. Because they will pollute it with their, what, with their unclean ordinances. Read. And for the overspreading of abominations. And for the overspreading of abominations, meaning pollutions. Desolations in the temples. Read. He shall make it desolate. He's going to do what? He shall make it desolate. He's going to make the temple desolate. Meaning we will no longer be able to sacrifice for a period of time. This is during the time of the Greeks. For 2,300 days. From 171 BC to 165 BC. Read. Even until the consummation. And that determined 
shall be poured upon the desolate. And that which is determined was to be poured upon the desolate, which is what? Our temple being polluted. You understand? Now we understand. What we're reading in the book of Psalms is prophecy of what would happen to our temple. Okay? Is what would happen to our temple. Now watch this. Go back. Go back to Psalms now. Okay? Go back to Psalms chapter 74. Psalm 74 verse 4. Watch this. Before we get, before we go there, give me Baruch 4. Give me Baruch chapter 4. Read verse 12. Baruch 4 verse 12 because is the, the, um, what we just read in Daniel is that our temple would be polluted. Okay? But watch this. Read that. Baruch chapter 4 verse 12. Mm -hmm. Let no man rejoice over me, a widow, and forsaken of men, who for the sins of my children am left desolate. You see what he's saying? He says, a widow, forsaken of many. This is Jerusalem here. <coughs> Remember, Jerusalem is a people before it's a place. Okay? Read. Because they departed from the law of God. Because we departed from the laws of God. Come on. They knew not his statutes. They, we knew not his statutes. Read. Nor walked in the ways of his commandments. Uh huh. Come on. Nor trodden the paths of discipline. Nor trodden the paths of discipline that he commanded unto us. Read. In his righteousness. Uh huh. Is that it on that? Yes, sir. Jump down to verse 15. Baruch chapter 4, verse 15. Read. For he has brought the nation upon them from far. Because the Lord, for, for, for the temple to be polluted, the Lord brought a nation against us from far. You understand? Because go back to verse 16. Okay, go back to verse 13. Go back to verse 13. Why would the Lord send a nation against us from far? Verse 13 again. Baruch chapter 4 verse 13. Read. They knew not his statutes. That's the reason why. We knew not his statutes. We no longer kept his laws. Read. Nor walked in the ways of his commandments. Nor walked in the way of his laws, commandments. Come on. Nor trod in the path of discipline in his righteousness. In his commandments. Verse 16, verse 15 now. Come on. Verse 15. For he hath brought a nation upon them from far. That's the reason why he brought a nation against us from far. Read. A shameless nation. A shameless nation. Read on. And of a strange language. Of a strange language because when they showed up on the sea, they spoke Latin. Okay? That's not our home language. Read. Who neither reverenced old men. They didn't care about the old men. Read. Nor pity child. They didn't care about our children when they came to make the, the, the temple desolate or, and, or to pollute it. Read. These have carried away the dear beloved children of the widow. You see that thing? The, be the dear beloved children of the widow is the 12 tribes of Israel. Go ahead. And left her that was alone, desolate, without daughters. You see that? He left her that was desolate without daughters. The abomination that make it desolate. <laughs> That's what we're reading here. Okay? Now we're going to go into the details of the names of the abomination, a nation from far, that will, what, that will bring the widow... That will make the widow desolate. Okay? Now watch this. Give me Deuteronomy 28 verse 50. Deuteronomy 28 verse 50. Watch this. Because our forefather Moses, he prophesied about this thing. The abomination that will make desolate. Read. Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 50. Start at verse 49. Watch this. Verse 49. Come on. The Lord shall bring a nation against thee from far. You see that's the same thing we read in Baruch. Baruch is quoting our forefather Moses. He says what? The Lord shall bring a nation against thee from far. The Lord brought a nation against us from far. Come on. From the end of the earth, as swift as the eagle flies. As swift as the eagle flies. Because this nation will be like, will be what? Will, like a, will be like a predator. You understand? They'll be, they'll be like a predator hunting prey. And their symbol will be the eagle. You understand? So Moses is giving you clues of a nation that will make your temple desolate. Read. A nation whose tongue Thou shalt not understand. Because they'll be coming on the scene speaking Latin. Read. A nation of fierce countenance. A nation of fierce countenance. Come on. We shall not regard the person of the old. They're not going to care about the old. Our fathers and mothers, grandfathers and grandmothers. Go ahead. Nor show favor to the young. Nor favor, favor to our children. That's what the Lord is saying what will happen to us right there. Now watch this. Give me First Maccabees 1 verse 10. Okay. First Ma No, no, no. Go back to Psalms. Let's go back to Psalms. Okay, Psalm 74 now. Psalm 74, read verse 4. Watch this. Psalms chapter 74, verse 4. Thine enemies roar in the midst of thy congregation. He says, he says, thine enemies roar in the midst of your congregation. 
Remember, it says what? It says, lift up thy feet unto the perpetual desolations, even all that the enemy has done wickedly in the sanctuary. So the enemies will do wickedly in the sanctuary. You understand? How they, they will roar, they will roar in the midst of our congregations. Who are these enemies he's talking about? Is the enemies that what? That will have a fierce countenance, that will come from far, that have the symbol of the eagle, neither will they care about the old nor the young. You understand? They'll come to make war and destroy everything that the Lord has promised unto us. Watch this. Read that. First Maccabees 1 verse 10. Who are the enemies that roared in the midst of our congregations? Read it. First Maccabees chapter 1 verse 10. Go ahead. And there came out of them a wicked root. They came out of them a wicked root. Come on. Antiochus. Antiochus. Read. Surnamed Epiphanes. So Antiochus, whose surname was Epiphanes, this is Antiochus the fourth. Antiochus the fourth, surname Epiphanes, he is one of those enemies, a Greek, who roared in the midst of our sanctuary, who roared in the midst of our temples to pollute it. The abomination that made desolate. Read. Son of Antiochus the king. Uh-huh. Who had been in hostage at Rome. Read. And he reigned in the hundred and thirty and seventh year of the kingdom of the Greeks. You see that thing? So he was the king of the Greeks. He was over the Greek empire. You understand? Antiochus the fourth. So now, read that verse again, verse 10. I'm going to show you something here. Verse Maccabees chapter 1, verse 10. Come on. And there came out of them a wicked root. They came out of them a wicked root. This wicked root is Antiochus. The them here is Alexander's four generals. Jump up to verse 1. First Maccabees 1 and 1. First Maccabees chapter 1 verse 1. Read. And it happened after that Alexander, son of Philip. It, it happened after that Alexander. This is Alexander the Greek. Okay, read. Son of Philip, the Macedonian. Read. Who came out of the land of Kittim. Kittim is Rome. Come on. Had smitten Darius, king of the Persians, and Medes. Read. That he reigned in his stead, the first over Greece. So this is around 333 BC. 333 BC, Alexander is assuming the role, the throne. He's assuming the throne of Greece. Okay? The first king of the Greeks. Okay? Around 333 BC. Now watch this. Keep reading. And made many wars and won many strongholds. So Alexander was conquering. He went around conquering these nations. Read the dark nations. Come on. And slew the kings of the earth. And he, he slew the kings of the earth. He took over, he conquered. Read. And went through to the ends of the earth uh -huh. and took spoils of many nations. He took spoils of many nations. Not only did he conquer, but he robbed them of their spoils. Okay? To bring them into his kingdom. Read. In so much that the earth was quiet before him. He says, in so much that the earth was quiet before him. What does that mean? In so much that the earth was quiet before him. Keep reading, we're going to explain that. Read. Whereupon he was exalted. And his heart was lifted up. So let's understand what it means when it says, it says he conquered, he, may, he took spoils of many nations in so much that the earth was quiet before Alexander. What does that mean? I'm going to give you an example. Give me Zacharias chapter 6 verse 8. Zacharias. He says, in so much that the, the earth was quiet, the earth was quiet before him. Zacharias 6 verse 8. Read. Zacharias chapter 6 verse 8. Come on. Then cried he upon me, and spake unto me, saying, uh -huh. Behold, these that go toward the north country. These that go toward the north country. In se after 70 AD, when our temple was destroyed by the Romans, you understand, 1600 years late, we were what? We fled deeper into the continent of Africa. You understand? We fled deeper into the continent. 1600 years later, the transatlantic slave trade happened. The sub Saharan slave trade took place also, way before then. Guess what? Our many of our forefathers, they were taken to North, Central, and South America on slave ships. Read the verse again. Verse 8. Zechariah 6, verse 8. Come on. Then cried he upon me, and spake unto me, saying, Read. Behold, these that go toward the north country have quieted my spirit. Have quieted my spirit. Meaning they conquered us. They conquered us. Because when the tribe of Gad, northern kingdom, when they go to the Americas, nobody was there. When Christopher Columbus showed up on the sea, they say the age, they say they call it the age of discovery. You understand? 
When they arrived over there, guess what? They quieted our spirits in the North Country, North, Central, and South America. Go ahead. These that go toward the North Country have quieted my spirit in the North Country. They have quieted our spirits in the North Country. They conquer us. Okay? Now watch this. Give me Isaiah chapter 14, verse 12. Isaiah chapter 14 verse 12. Read that. Isaiah chapter 14 verse 12. Read. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer? I'm going to give an example here. Go ahead. Son of the morning. Read. Lucifer, the son of the morning, who's there? Babylon the great. Go ahead. How art thou cut down to the ground? Read. Which did weaken the nation. Which did what? Which did weaken the nation. Which did weaken the nation. There's one kingdom on this earth that weakens all nations on earth. Babylon the Great, a.k.a. the United States of America. They are the ones that are weakening the nations. Okay? They quiet our spirits. Read. For thou hast said in thy heart, I will ascend into heaven. The, because that's what they say. They say, I will ascend into heaven. When did they ascend into heaven? That's when they went. They went to the moon. 1969. Okay, go ahead. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. He says he will exalt his throne above the stars of God. Because what did they do? They built the International Space Station, the ISS. It's up there. They went to space. They did the moon landing, okay, in 1969 during the Apollo 11. Read. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation. You see what they are saying? This is America. It says, I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation where? In the sides of the north. In North America. He says, I'm going to sit also upon the mount of the congregation. They, what? they will conquer and quiet our spirits. We're going to be in captivity. That's what he's saying right there. Okay? Now go back to Psalms. He says, we'll sit upon the mount of the congregation. We just read it. Who the mount of the congregation is. Psalm 74 verse 2. Psalm 74 verse 2. Read. Remember the congregation. Remember the congregation. Come on. Which thou hast purchased of old. Read. The road of thy inheritance, which thou hast redeemed. Uh -huh. This Mount Zion. You see that? The mount of the congregation is Mount Zion. Read. Wherein thou hast dwelt. You see that where the Lord has dwelt. What we read in Joel 2.27. Go back to 1 Maccabees now. Chapter 1. 1 Maccabees chapter 1. Read verse 4 now. 1 Maccabees chapter 1 verse 4. Come on. And he gathered a mighty strong host and ruled over countries. He ruled over countries. A host is an army. Read. And nations. Come on. And kings. Who became tributaries unto him. Because they paid Alexander taxes. Read. And after these things, he fell sick. Alexander fell sick. He dropped. He fell sick from syphilis. Okay. Because he was having sex with men. Read. And perceived that he should die. Because why? He dropped dead. He realized that I'm going to die. So I need to what? Part my kingdom among these men. Read. Wherefore he called his servants, such as were honorable. And had been brought up with him from his youth. Because this, this man was brought up with him from his youth. Okay, read. And parted his kingdom among them. So he parted his kingdom, the kingdom of the Greeks, among them. Read. While he was yet alive. While he was still alive. Come on. So Alexander reigned 12 years and then died. He reigned 12 years and then died. Okay, come on. And his servants bear rule everyone in his place. You see that thing? His servants is those four generals. Alexander's four generals, they are the ones that took over the kingdom after he died. Go ahead. After his death, they all put crowns upon themselves. They put crowns upon themselves. They started to conquer. Because now they were the kings now. Read. So did their sons after them many years. Generational now. Come on. And evils were multiplied in the earth. Because you see what the Bible is teaching us? It says when the Greeks took over the earth from the time of Alexander, it says evils were multiplied on the earth. It, it doesn't mean that evil was not there. It says it multiplied. It became worse when they took over. Okay? Now, read verse 10 now. Come on. And there came out of them a wicked root. That them is Alexander's four generals who he parted his kingdom among. Those four generals, I'm going to name them. Cassander is one. Cassander. He took over Macedonia and Greece. Lysimachus is another one. He took over Thrace and Asia Minor. Okay? Lysimachus, he took over Thrace and Asia Minor. Ptolemy, he took over Egypt. Seleucus, he took over Syria. Okay, he took over Babylon. He took over Persia. Seleucus, 
Seleucus took over Syria, Persia, and Babylon. Okay? So Alexander divided his kingdom among these four generals. Cassander, Lysimachus, Ptolemy, and Seleucus, or Seleucus. Okay? Antiochus comes out of the Seleucus Empire. That's who he comes from. First Maccabees 1 verse 10. Now we have the name of those enemies that King David was talking about in the book of Psalms through Asaph. Read it. First Maccabees chapter 1 verse 10. Come on. And there came out of them a wicked root. Read. Antiochus, Senem, Epiphanes. Come on. Son of Antiochus the king. So Antiochus is one of the enemies that, that the book of Psalms is making reference to. Antiochus. Read. Who had been in hostage at Rome. Uh-huh. And he reigned in the hundred and thirty and seventh year of the kingdom of the Greeks. Go back to Psalms now. Psalm 74. Psalm 74. Read verse 4 again. Psalms chapter 74 verse 4. Read. Thy enemies roar in the midst of thy congregation. Thy enemies roar in the midst of thy congregation. Who are those enemies? Antiochus was one of them. Those that came before him. Seleucus. Those that came before him. Alexander. Go ahead. They set up their ensigns for signs. They set up their ensigns for signs. He says their enemies, they roar in the midst of the congregation. They set up their ensigns for signs. How did they do that? Give me first Maccabees 348. They set up their ensigns for signs in them in our congregation. That's how they roared in the midst of our congregation. Read. First Maccabees chapter 3, verse 48. Come on. And laid open the book of the law. He laid open the, our forefathers, they laid open the books of the law. That's the Bible. Come on. Wherein the heathen had sought to paint the likeness of their images. You see that thing? The heathens, they sought out to paint the likeness of their images in our Bibles and in our temples. What is it called? Iconoclasm. Whitewashing of images. That's what they did. They set up their insights for signs. Okay? They started to whitewash all the black images in the Bible and throughout history when we ruled and were powerful and formidable kingdom on earth. You understand? Go back to Psalms now. 74. You know what? Give me Hosea 3 and 4. Let's get that real quick. Hosea chapter 3 verse 4. Watch this. Hosea chapter 3 verse 4. Read. For the children of Israel shall abide many days without a king. The Lord says we will abide many days without a king. Our Lord and Savior. Go ahead. And without a prince. Uh -huh. And without a sacrifice. And without a sacrifice. Because why? We could not sacrifice because the temple was polluted. We couldn't sacrifice. Okay, read. And without an image. We see that without an image because they set up their insights for signs. Read. And without an effort. Because we could not communicate with the Messiah through the priests. Because the priesthood was polluted. The sanctuary was polluted. Go ahead. And without teraphim. And without teraphim, where we can communicate with the Lord. Okay? So now, give me First Maccabees chapter 1, verse 20. First Maccabees 1, verse 20. First Maccabees chapter 1, verse 20. Come on. And after that, Antiochus had smitten Egypt. He returned again in the hundred forty and third year and went up against Israel and Jerusalem with a great multitude. So Antiochus came into, our, into Jerusalem with a great multitude, with a great host. After he took over the kingdom from Ptolemy in Egypt, that was allotted to him by Alexander before he died. Read. And entered proudly into the sanctuary. He, he did what? And entered proudly into the sanctuary. He entered proudly into our sanctuary. Come on. And took away the golden altar. You see that? They started to rob our temples, our vessels and precious things. Read. And the candlestick of light. Uh, the menorah. Go ahead. And all the vessels thereof, mm -hmm. and the table of the shoe bread, Read. and the pouring vessels, and the vials, Come on. and the censers of gold, and the vein, and the crowns, and the golden ornaments that were before the temple, all which he pulled off. Read. He took also the silver and the gold, Read. and the precious vessels. Also he took the hidden treasures which he found. Uh -huh. Come on. And when he had taken all away, he went into his own land. You see that? After he took everything from the temple, he went back to his own land. Come on. Having made a great massacre. You see that? Having great, made a great massacre, slaughtering many of our forefathers during that time. Read. And spoken very proudly. He spoken very proudly of what he did in the temple and the things he took 
and the killings that he performed. He spoken very proudly. That's what we read in here when it says, our enemies roar in the midst of our congregation. That's what we read in here. Okay? Now, go back to Psalms now. Psalm 74. Read verse 5. Psalms chapter 74, verse 5. Come on. Do you know what? Read verse 4 again. Psalms chapter 74, verse 4. Thy enemies roar in the midst of their congregation. Our enemies roar in the midst of our congregations. Come on. They set up their ensigns for sight. They set up their images in our temples and destroyed ours. Read. A man was famous according as he had lifted up axes upon the thick trees. He says, says, a man was famous according to as he had lifted up, lifted up axes upon the thick trees. Because what, guess, guess what? We had images in our temples. You understand? So the famous, the, our, the famous, the famous men, our forefathers were, they were gifted in crafting great and glorious images at the command of the Most High. So they were, they, they were famous for that. Well, why? To deck the temple according to the to the commands of the Lord. Give me that in Exodus 31 verse 1. We need to understand our history. We must be proud of it. You understand? We must be proud because it's a glorious day today. It's a glorious day this week. The most High God so fit for us to be here on this day. To remember this glorious day. So I don't want to see nobody with a long face. Now read the Bible. Exodus chapter 31 verse 1. Read. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Come on. See, see, I have called by name Bezaliel, the son of Uri. The son of Uri. Read. The son of who? Of the tribe of Judah. Of the tribe of Judah. Come on. And I have filled him with the spirit of God. Uh-huh. In wisdom and in understanding. Come on. And in knowledge and in all manner of workmanship. And in all manner of workmanship. That was as a man was famous for lifting up axes. For what? For taking the temple as the Lord commanded. Come on. To devise cunning works to work in gold. You see that? To devise cunning works to work in gold. Read. To work in gold and in silver and in brass. Come on. And in cutting of stones to set them and in carving of timber. And in doing what? In carving of timber. And in carving of timber. That's why he says a man was famous for lifting up, lifting up axes. You understand? To to create those great images that the Lord commanded to put in the temple. Read. To work in all manner of workmanship. Read. And I, behold, I have given with him a holy up. A holy up. The son of Ahisamak. Ahisamak. Come on. Of the tribe of Dan. Of the tribe of Dan. We know the tribe of Dan has been swallowed among the tribe of Benjamin. Go ahead, but they still exist today. Come on. And in the hearts of all that are wise hearted, I have put wisdom. Come on. That they may make all that I have commanded thee. Read. The tabernacle of the congregation. The tabernacle of the congregation. Come on. And the ark of the testimony. The ark of the testimony. Read. And the mercy seat. Read. That is thereupon. And all the furniture of the tabernacle. And all the furniture of the tabernacle. That needed what? Those famous men to lift up axes. To carve this cunning work. Read. And the table and his furniture. And the pure candlestick. The table is the table of shoe bread. And his furniture. And the pure candlestick. That's the menorah. And his furniture. Come on. With all his furniture and the altar of incense. Read. And the altar of burnt offering. With all his furniture. And the labor and his food. You see that thing? So go back to Psalms now. Psalm 74. Okay, Psalm 74 and verse 5 again. Come on. Psalm chapter 74, verse 5. Read. A man was famous according as he had lifted up axes upon the thick trees. That's what we read in Exodus. It's an example of that. Come on. But now they break down the cup work thereof. You see what the enemies did when they came into the congregation proudly? It says, Now they break down the cup work thereof. They destroyed our images. They set up their inside for signs. Read. At once with, an, with axes and hammers. You see what they did? Come on. They have cast fire into thy sanctuary. You see what they did? He says they cast fire into our sanctuary. Read. They have defiled by casting down the dwelling place of thy name to the ground. You see what he's saying? Read again verse 7. Psalm chapter 74 verse 7. Go ahead. They have cast fire into thy sanctuary. They have defiled by casting down 
the dwelling place of thy name to the ground. Now watch this. Give me First Maccabees one fifty six, because it says they cast fire into thy sanctuary. What did they do when the Greeks entered into our temples? What did they do to defile it thereby? Psalm First Maccabees one verse fifty six. Read that. First Maccabees chapter one verse fifty six. Come on. And when they had rent in pieces the books of the law which they found, they rent in pieces the books of the law which they found where in the sanctuary in the temple read they burnt them with fire they did what they burnt them with fire they burnt them with fire so now when they're burning our books which are in the temples they robbed us first and what did they do they say listen we're not going to do nothing with the books bend them down where were the books found in the temple so what happened to the temple too the temple also was set on fire understand that okay that's the history Read again verse 56. First Maccabees chapter 1 verse 56. Come on. And when they had rent in pieces the books of the law. They rent in pieces the books of the law, the Bible, come on. Which they found. Read. They burnt them with fire. Come on. And wheresoever was found with any of the book of the testament, or if any consented to the law. So, meaning when they found our forefathers with the Bibles, remember what Hitler was doing? Hitler was going around burning Bibles. That's what Hitler was doing. Guess what? This is, these are his forefathers. He's just following after the first of his forefathers. He's not doing nothing new that his forefathers didn't do. You understand? That's what we're reading here. When they, because remember, they set, our, they, they, they set our, our Bibles on fire. So if they found any of our forefathers and foremothers reading a Bible, what happened to them? They killed them. You understand? That's how serious this is. That's why we must celebrate this glorious day. Read. Or if any consented to the law, the king's commandment was... If any consented to the law, meaning what? I'm going to keep the commandments. I'm going to celebrate the Feast of Tabernacles. I'm going to celebrate the Passover. I'm going to celebrate the Feast of Purim. I'm going to celebrate the Feast of Weeks. You understand? I'm going to celebrate the Feast of the Dedication. Go ahead. The king's commandment was that they should put him to death. You see what they did to our forefathers? This is what they did to our foremothers. That's why today our, our people, they are, they, are, they are what? They are traumatized by the Bible. Whenever you read the Bible, they say, no, 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 that's a white man's book. The white man wrote that. Because why? They have been traumatized with this book. Their own history book, the book of their fathers, they are traumatized by it. Because it's not being taught right, nor is it taught by the right people of this book. But guess what? The prophets are back, and they're black. And guess what we're doing? We're waking up our people to return back to honor. Understand that thing. First Maccabees 1 verse 43. Watch this. First Maccabees chapter 1 verse 43. Go ahead. Yea, many also of the Israelites. Remember, don't forget now. Remember it says what? It says the enemies. It wasn't just the Greeks. It wasn't just the Greeks. You had many of our people that joined in with the Greeks to pollute the sanctuary. To help them to destroy our temples. So today, who do you have? You have the same people you have one. Desmond Tutu is one. Bushiri is one. Mukuba is one. Okay. Who's the other? Who's the other with these wicked lying pastors? Hmm? Wutiri Jakes, Wukrafla Dollar. They are the same wicked pastors that are that were doing that joined themselves with the Greeks to do what? To lie to our people. That's why when you go to church, they teach about Christmas. Christmas is not in the Bible. They teach about Mother's Day. It's not in the Bible. They teach about birthdays. They are not in the Bible for us to celebrate. When we were celebrating, when the nation celebrated their birthdays, we were the gifts. They would take our daughters to become the gifts of their own children, to become slaves. That's what they would do. Our people, they celebrate those things in ignorance. Some do it knowingly. They do it anyway. Read verse 43, first Maccabees. First Maccabees chapter 1, verse 43. Go ahead. Yea, many also of the Israelites consented to his religion. You see that? Many of our people, they consented to the Greek religion, which is politics and democracy. Read. And sacrificed unto idols. They sacrificed unto idols. Come on. And profaned the Sabbath. They profaned the Sabbath day. Read. No longer so, they are no longer observing the Sabbath. Friday night, where are they? At the clubs, buying, selling, cooking. Mugruvo, okay? Groovists and jivists. 
Again, that's what they do. Polluting the Sabbath. Breaking the commandments of the Mosai. Read. For the king had sent letters by messengers unto Jerusalem. Come on. And the cities of Judah. Read. That they should follow the strange laws of the land. You see that thing? That's why now our people are following strange laws of the land. Read. And forbid burnt offerings. They stopped sacrificing because the temple was what? Polluted. Okay, read. And sacrifice. And the sacrifices were also what? They were also caused to cease. Read. And drink offerings. We could not offer drink offerings no more. Read on. In the temple. Uh -huh. And that they should profane the Sabbath. They should profane the Sabbath. That's why now, what are our people doing now? Plus, get December. Saturday is what are they doing? They are praying. You understand? They're having parties. Very great Christmas party to get together. Nah. That's what we are reading here. Go ahead. Profane the Sabbath and festival days. And the festival days, meaning the high holy days. Instead of, instead of celebrating the Feast of the Dedication, what are they celebrating? Christmas. And Christmas has nothing to do with the birth of Christ. Christ was not born on December 25th. Christ was born on the Passover. In April, Christ was born. So what are they celebrating? Paganism. Pagan customs of the devil. Read. And pollute the sanctuary and holy people. You see that? And, pol and what? And pollute the sanctuary. So who, who was doing this? Israelites. Israelites was doing this. Read. Set up altars and groves and chapels of idols. And chapels of idols. They set up altars and groves in our temples. Read. And sacrifice swine's flesh. And sacrifice pig meat. Pig meat in the temple. When we're supposed to bring what? Sheep. Goat. Turtle dove. Ne? Oxen. They, they were bringing what? Uluwe. Ihuku. Ngoku. That's what they was doing, right? Go ahead. And unclean beasts. And unclean beasts. Now they're bringing shrimp, lobster, calamari. You understand? Go ahead. That they should also leave their children uncircumcised. Okay, that's it on there. That's it on there. That's it on there. Give me Daniel 11 verse 27. Daniel 11, verse 27. No, no, Daniel 9, 27. Daniel 9. Daniel 9, 27. We read 11, 27 earlier on. I want Daniel 9 now. Daniel 9, verse 27. Read that. Daniel chapter 9, verse 27. Go ahead. And he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. Read. And in the midst of the week, he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease. Because the temple, the, the, the temple was polluted. That was the whole point, to pollute the temple. Once the, the temple is polluted, guess what? That means we have been cut off from our heritage. Not only that, but we can no longer sacrifice to the Lord. That means our people could not repent. Our people could not, their prayers could not be heard. That was for 2,300 days. Now is more than 2,000 years. Our prayers have not been answered by the Most High. Why? Because of the breaking of the commandments. The temple being polluted. How? Now, we believe that Jesus is a white man. We believe that uh, God is a white man. Now our minds is defiled because we're following the customs of these other nations. Guess what? Our spiritual temple is now polluted too. Understand that? Read. And for the overspreading of abomination. And for the overspreading of abomination, the abomination that make it desolate, the pollution of our temple. Read. He shall make it desolate. He shall make it desolate. Come on. Even until the consummation. And that determined shall be poured upon the desolate. And that is that which is determined, that which is prophesied in Deuteronomy 28 by Moses, shall what? Shall be poured upon the desolate. We read it earlier in Deuteronomy 28 verse 49 and 50. Understand that? Okay. Go back to Psalms now. 74. Psalm 74 verse 8. Psalms 74 verse 8. Read. They said in their hearts, let us destroy them together. Let us, they said in their hearts, let us destroy these Israelites together. Go ahead. Meaning they what? Went up. The Greeks and our people, that what? That were favoring the Greeks. They hated their own people. Read. They have bent up all the synagogues of God. They in the did land. what? They have bent up all the synagogues of God. They bent up all the synagogues of God. So they were setting our temples on fire. They were burning our temples. So when it says, let us come together and let us what? 
It says what? Let us. They said in their hearts, let us destroy them together. Because the objective is to destroy the 12 tribes by any means necessary. Okay? It says they have done what? They have burnt up all the synagogues of God in the land. In the land of Israel. Now watch this. Give me first mark of his one, verse 41. When it says, they said in their heart, this is how they did it. Watch this, verse 41. First Maccabees chapter 1, verse 41. Come on. Moreover, King Antiochus. Moreover. Not only this, moreover, King Antiochus, Epiphanes the fourth, read. Wrote to his whole kingdom. He wrote to his whole kingdom because he took over the Seleucus Empire. Not only that, he conquered Ptolemy and took over Egypt. Read. That all should be one people. That all should be one people. Everybody should be one. That's called democracy. Everybody should be one. That's called Christianity. Because it's all the same thing. Christianity, democracy, is all the same. Is what? Two sides of the same coin. Because Christianity is not in the Bible. Okay? Christianity is no way you can... You can read the Bible from cover to cover. You'll never find the word Christianity in it. Because God did not give Moses Christianity. He gave him laws, statutes, and commandments. That's it. Okay? Read. And everyone should leave his laws. And everyone should leave his laws. Who was given the commandments? Israel. We as the children of Israel, God gave us laws, statutes, and commandments. Read. So all the heathen agreed according to the commandments of the king. So all the heathens agreed according to the commandments of the king. Go back to Psalm now. 74, verse 8 again. Now we're reading about the history of when they said in their hearts, let us come and destroy them together. That's what we're reading here. Read it. Psalm chapter 74 verse 8. Come on. They said in their hearts, let us destroy them together. Go ahead. They have burned up all the synagogues of God in the land. They've burned up all the synagogues of, synagogues of God in the land. Go back to 1 Maccabees 1. Read verse 56 again. 1 Maccabees chapter 1 verse 56. Go ahead. And when they had rent in pieces the books of the law. When they rent in pieces the books of the law, just like Hitler did. Read, what did they do? Which they found, they burnt them with fire. They were burning our Bibles. Not only that, but they were also burning our temples because the Bibles were found in the temple that they were polluting. Give me that in First Ezra 4. First Ezra 4 verse 45. Watch this. First Ezra chapter 4 verse 45. Read that. This is during the time of Persia, okay? During the time of Cyrus. But what I'll show you here is that the decree was that, listen, when everything is good, because this is now Zerubbabel speaking, you understand? He says, listen, if I, if I say the wisest say, I don't want to be your cousin, but guess what? I want you to, what, to restore the vessels that were stolen when the Enomites were helping the Babylonians to destroy our temple. But I want to show you something with this verse. Verse 45. Read it. First Ezra, chapter 4, verse 45. Come on. Thou also hast vowed to build up the temple. Go ahead. Which the Edomites burned when Judea was made desolate by the Chaldees. You see what he's saying? It says, Thou also hast vowed to build up the temple. That's when we had to return back to be rebuilt with Nehemiah, Zerubbabel, and Joshua. Right? It says, Which the Edomites burned. When Judea was made desolate by the Chaldees, meaning by Babylon. So Edom was helping Babylon destroy our temple. And how did they help them? They burned our temples with fire. So even this is even during the time of Babylon's reign, Edom helped them to set our temples on fire. Because Edom understood one thing. If you want to if you really want to get to them, don't do nothing. You what you're doing, you play. Take away their Bible, their Bible set their Bibles on fire, then guess what? They will be disconnected from their God of heaven and earth. You see, the nations know how powerful we are, and they also know what makes us powerful. The keeping of the commandments, us understanding what this Bible is saying, to build our families, to raise up our sons and our daughters. The nations, they know that. Once they take us away from the Bible, we destroy it. Look at our communities now. Look how destroyed we are as a nation. Look at the broken families. Baby mamas, mm? baby daddies, single parent households, abortions, teenage pregnancy, young girls having sex. That's, what, that's the reason why the, the Bible is not in the community right now. It's not being taught. 
Why? Because the pastors are playing with this book. Not no more. We beg. We're not going to play with this Bible. We're going to rebuild our families back to honor. In the spirit of Christ, the black Messiah. Understand that? So let's go back to Psalm 74. Verse 9 now. Psalms, the 74 verse 9. Come on. We see not our signs. There is no more any prophet. You see what they are saying? He says, we see not our signs. Because what did they do? Jump up to verse 4. Why we don't see our signs no more? Verse 4. Verse 4. Uh -huh. Thine enemies roar in the midst of their congregation. Antiochus and them. Read. They set up their end signs for signs. That's why we see not our signs anymore. Because the enemies, they roar in the midst of our congregation. They set up their insights for signs. Now jump down to verse 9 again. Verse 9. We see not our signs. Uh -huh. There is no more any prophet. You see what they are saying? We see not our signs. There is no more any prophet to prophesy of the things that is to come. Or when is this madness going to stop? When is this nightmare going to stop? How long is this going to go for where our temple is polluted, is destroyed? We cannot sacrifice. How long is this going to go for? That's what he's asking here. Read it again. Psalm chapter 74 verse 9. Read. We see not our signs. Come on. There is no more any prophet. There is no more any prophet to prophesy. Read. Neither is there, is there among us any that knoweth how long. You see that? Not that knoweth. How long is the temple going to be polluted? The sanctuary defiled that we cannot sacrifice. You understand that? Now watch this. Give me that in 2 Chronicles 15 verse 3. He says what? He says, there is no more any prophet. Now read that. 2 Chronicles 15 verse 3. This is during the time of our forefather King Asa. Watch this. 2 Chronicles chapter 15 verse 3. Come on. Now for a long season. For a long season. Come on. Israel has been without a true God. You see that? Israel has been without a true God. That's a long season. 2,300 days. That's a long season. Understand that? Now it's even a longer season. It's been 2,000 plus years since Christ left the earth. 2,000 years. Not 2,300 days. 2,000 plus years. We are in the third day right now. You understand? In preparation for the second coming of our Lord and Savior. But guess what? He says we have been without a true God. Because we've been worshipping the idols of these other nations. Read. And without a teaching priest. Without a teaching priest, without a prophet. You understand? He says there's no more any prophet. Read. And without law. And without law. Because what did the prophets teach? They teach the laws of God. You understand? Now read that. Give me that in um, Jeremiah 3.15. The prophets teach the law. You understand? The prophets teach the law so the people can get right. But now, if there's no prophet to tell them how long, there's no prophet, number one. That means, guess what? Israel is disconnected. Because the prophet is not there to teach the people to the law so that people can do right in the sight of the Most High. Read. Jeremiah 3.15. Jeremiah chapter 3, verse 15. Mm -hmm. And I will give you pastors according to my heart. And I'm going to give you prophets which are pastors because the prophets or pastors, they prophesy. They teach before something takes place. Prophecy. Read. We shall fill you with knowledge and understanding. We shall do what? We shall fill you with knowledge and understanding. So the prophets, the pastors, will feed us with knowledge and understanding. They're not gonna teach about pro they're not gonna teach about prosperity. This is your season. This is your year. Hey! <laughs> they're not gonna be doing that. They're gonna teach the laws of God. They're not gonna they're not gonna be singing and do dancing and you understand forming at the mouth talking about the God, the Holy Ghost. They are not going to be doing that. They are going to teach the laws of God. Because that's what the pastors do in church. You understand? To add the special effects. To make the people believe that they are really saying something. When they are saying nothing. Read the Bible again. Jeremiah chapter 3 verse 15. Read. And I will give you pastors according to my heart. Read. Which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. The pastors, the job of a true prophet is to feed you with knowledge and understanding. To teach you the laws of God. That's it. Okay. Now, go back to Psalms. Okay, Psalms chapter 74. Verse 9 again. We're going to read 9 and 10 together. Watch this. Psalms chapter 74 verse 9. Go ahead. We see not our signs. We see not our signs. Why? Why we don't see our signs? 
Because they set up their insides for signs. Go ahead. There is no more any prophet. There is no more any prophet. Come on. Why? Uh, because Israel for a long season had no prophets or had no teaching priests. That's what we just read in Second Chronicles. Go ahead. Neither is there among us any that knoweth how long. You see that? It says, neither is there any among us that knoweth how long. Who's supposed to know how long? The prophet's supposed to know. The prophets, the Lord will put the spirit upon the prophets to know how long is certain things going to go for. You understand? Before we do what the Most High God has commanded us. You understand? According to the scriptures. Keep reading. Oh God, how long shall the adversary reproach? How long shall the adversary reproach? Meaning, what is the mean? What, what, what is that talking about? Polluting our temple. Okay, go ahead. Shall the enemy blaspheme thy name forever? Shall, you, shall the enemy blaspheme thy name forever? He is asking the question. You understand? Give me Daniel chapter 8 verse 13. Watch this. Daniel chapter 8 verse 13. Because what we're reading in the book of Psalms right here is the same thing that we're about to read in the book of Daniel. Daniel chapter 8. Read verse 13. Watch this. I'm going to show you. I'm showing you that the prophets, they all spoke the same thing. And there was no division among them. Read. Daniel chapter 8 verse 13. Come on. Then I heard one saint speak, and another saint said unto that certain saint which spake. Now the saints are talking one to another. Because of what? What was taking place. Read. How long shall be the vision concerning the daily sacrifice? You see what he's saying? This is the question. How long shall be the what? How long shall be the vision uh -huh. concerning the daily sacrifice? How long shall be the vision concerning the daily sacrifice? Because the daily sacrifices were what? Were brought to a stop. He shall cause the daily sacrifices to cease. Like we read in Daniel 9 verse 27. Read. And the transgression of desolation. And the transgression of desolation and the abomination that maketh desolate. How long is this going to go on for? That's what they're asking. I'm showing you that what we're reading in the book of Psalms. During the time of King David, is way before the prophet Daniel. Way before that. You understand? When we were ruling the earth during that time, and guess what? Our forefathers were prophesying about this thing. Read the verse again, verse 13. Daniel chapter 8, verse 13. Come on. Then I heard one saint speaking, and another saint unto that certain saint which spake. Read. How long? shall be the vision concerning the daily sacrifice. Come on. And the transgression of desolation. And the transgression of desolation. Or the abomination that make it desolate. Read. To give both the sanctuary. To what? To give both the sanctuary. To give both the sanctuary back to us. Come on. And the host to be trodden underfoot. And the host to be trodden underfoot. When is this going to go on for? He is asking the question. Next verse. Because remember it says... We have no prophet to tell us how long, but the Lord sent the prophets in the future to tell us how long is this going to go for. Read it. And he said unto me, unto 2,300 days. Now the, prophet, the Lord put the spirit upon the prophet to explain how long is this going to go for. Read. Then shall the century be cleansed. Read that again, verse 14. Come on. Daniel chapter 8, verse 14. Come on. And he said unto me, unto 2,300 days. Read. Then shall the sanctuary be cleansed. Then shall the sanctuary be cleansed. 2,300 days. Then will the sanctuary be cleansed. 171 BC to 165 BC. That's how long it was going to take. You understand? That's how it is going to go for. The temple being polluted. And after that, then guess what? We would be able to sacrifice again. Now, guess what? The most High God sent Christ to allow us to do what? To sacrifice again. Spiritual to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Now we are able to do that. Because the Lord sent the prophet. The mighty prophet he was. The black Messiah, Jesus the Christ. Understand that. Now jump up to verse 11. Daniel chapter 8 verse 11. Read. Yea, he magnified himself even to the priest of the host. The he is Antiochus who magnified himself. Against us. Read. And by him, the daily sacrifice was taken away. You see that? By Antiochus and our forefathers, wicked Israelites that helped them, he says daily sacrifices were what? Daily sacrifices was taken away. Was taken away for 2,300 days. Read. 
and the place of his sanctuary was cast down. And the place of our sanctuary was cast down to the ground by the Greeks. Go ahead. And an host was given him. And an host was given unto Antiochus. This host is wicked Israelites. You understand? These daily sacrifices is the sacrifices that we do that we were given to Moses during the time of the Exodus. Give me Numbers 28 verse 1. Real quick. Numbers chapter 28 verse 1. Watch this. You need to understand your history. To hell with desperate housewives. They don't want to teach you nothing. Read. Numbers chapter 28 verse 1. Come on. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Command the children of Israel, and say unto them, My offering and my prayer for my sacrifices, Read. made by fire, for your sweet server unto me, Come on. shall ye observe to offer unto me in their due season. He says, Shall ye observe to offer unto me in their due season. Go ahead. And thou shalt say unto them, And you shall say unto the children of Israel, That's us. Come on. This is the offering made by fire, which ye shall offer unto the Lord. Because we don't make an offering made by fire anymore because Christ was that sacrifice. We don't do that no more. But we keep the commandments in the faith of Christ. Read. Two lambs of the first year without spot. Go ahead. Day by day. How many days? Day by day. Day by day. Daily sacrifices were, come, were what were abolished. Read. For a continual burnt offering. For a continual burnt offering. Okay. Now, give me the book of First Maccabees 151. First Maccabees 1, verse 51. Okay. First because remember, it says, unto him, and host was given unto him. Read. First Maccabees chapter 1, verse 51. Come on. In the self-same manner, wrote he to his whole kingdom. This is Antiochus, come on. And appointed overseers, over all the people. The overseers is the taskmasters, the house negroes. Read. Commanding the cities of Judah. Commanding the cities of Judah. Go ahead. To sacrifice city by city. To sacrifice city by city. What were they sacrificing? Jump back down to verse 47. Start at verse 45. Watch this. First Maccabees chapter 1, verse 45. Go ahead. And forbid burnt offering. They forbid burnt offering. Come on. And sacrifice. And sacrifice. And drink offering. Come on. In the temple. Read. And that they should profane the Sabbaths and festival days. Now watch this. There's a colon there. Keep reading. And pollute the sanctuary. So now they set up house Negroes to convince our our forefathers that we're grievous, that we're not gonna we're not sacrificing anymore because the temple is polluted. But they set up, you know, the puppets. To tell us, no, no, you need to sacrifice this now instead of that. Go ahead. And pollute the sanctuary and holy people. They were polluting the sanctuary and holy people that kept the commandments. Read. Set up altars. They now, they now set up altars. He said they set up end signs for signs. It's not just whitewashing images. It's setting up their altars now in our temples. Read. And groves. And groves. That means graven images. Read. And chapels of idols. And chapels of idols. Read. And sacrifice swine's flesh. And sacrifice swine's flesh. That's why it says in the cities of Judah to sacrifice. City by city. This is what was the, this is what was being commanded for us to sacrifice. Swine's flesh. Come on. And unclean beasts. And unclean beasts. Sacrificing unto devils, not to God. To God whom we knew not. Who neither whom them our fathers I'm butchering it. You know what I'm talking about in Deuteronomy 32, verse 15. You can read that on your own. Okay? Go back to first Maccabees 1. Verse 52 now. First Maccabees chapter 1, verse 52. Come on. Then many of the people were gathered unto them. Many of the people were gathered unto them. To wit, everyone that forsook the law. You see that thing? Many of the people that were gathered unto those overseers. The taskmaster, the house negroes that joined themselves to the Greeks. You understand? Go ahead. And so they committed evils in the land. They forsook the law and committed evils in the in the what? He says in the land. Go ahead. And drove the Israelites into secret places. You see what they did? They were driving us into secret places in hiding. We was hiding from them. Because they joined themselves to the heathens to destroy us. Read. 
even wheresoever they could flee for succor. You see, wherever we, we fled for comfort, they, they, they went there anyway also. They found us with our children, by the way. Don't forget, he says, they never reverence old man nor pity child. Read. Now the 15th day of the month Kaslu. The 15th, the 15th day of the month Kaslu. Come on. In the 140th and 5th year, they set up the abomination of desolation. Come on. Upon the altar. Read. And built idol altars uh. throughout the cities of Judah on every side. You see what they were doing? This is the evils that they were doing, and they had help. Who was helping them? Wicked Israelites. You had them back then, you're going to have them today. Spies among us. You understand? Don't think that you're not gonna you're not gonna experience that. Oh, you will. Because this is not a game. This is serious business. You understand? Remember, this movement is to wake up the 12 tribes of Israel so that we can what? We can rule all the nations on earth and live forever. So you think this is not is a small job? This is not a small job. Guess what? This is a huge undertaking. And is a threat to the entire planet Earth. So you think they're not going to be spies among us, the agents that work for Satan? Yes, you're going to have them. The same way you had them during this time, too. Understand that, okay? Daniel 8. Hopefully, Roswell, I can get through the stuff I want to go over. Go ahead. Daniel chapter 8, verse 12. Mm -hmm. And an host was given him. Uh -huh. And host is the wicked of our people. Against the daily sacrifice by reason of transgression. You see that? By reason of transgression, meaning sin. Read. And it cast down the truth to the ground. They cast down the truth to the ground. They were burning our Bibles. They were rending in pieces the books of the law. Read. And it practiced and prospered. They practiced and they prospered. Okay. Now, now give me Daniel 11 now. Give me Daniel chapter 11. Let's get into the war now. Okay. Let's get into the war before... The war. Okay, Daniel chapter 11, verse 32. Watch this. Daniel chapter 11, verse 32. Come on. And such as do wickedly against the covenant shall he corrupt by flattery. So, we read that again, verse 32. Daniel chapter 11, verse 32. Read. And such as do wickedly against the covenant shall he corrupt by flattery. So, because Antiochus will corrupt the Israel that joined with him. He's going to corrupt them by flatteries. You understand? Offering the positions and money. You understand? Read. But the people that do know their God. But the people that do know their God, that keep the commandments, that you brothers and sisters. Okay, read. Shall be strong. Shall be what? Shall be strong. We're going to be strong in the Lord. And do exploits. And do exploits. So back then, he's talking about Marathias and his sons. Okay? They shall what? The people that do know their God shall be what? But the people that do know their God uh -huh. shall be strong. The people that do know their God shall be strong, come on. And do exploits. And do exploits. That you brothers, following after the footsteps of our forefathers, Marathias, Judah Maccabee, and his brothers. You understand? So I'm not going to go through that history because I want to go through something else. You understand? I went over that in the previous Feast of Dedication, the history of Marathias and Judah Maccabee. Okay, so this right here is talking about what? Judah Ma Marathias, Judah Maccabee, and his brothers. That's what he's talking about here in verse 32. Go ahead. Verse 33. Read. And they that understand among the people. And they that understand among the people. Shall instruct many. Shall instruct many. Verse 32 is during the time of Marathias rose up and his sons after him, which is Judah Maccabee and his brethren. Verse 33, it says, and they that understand among the people shall instruct many. Guess what? What we're reading right here is during the time of Rome. This is the Roman Empire now. Verse 32 is during the time of the Greeks when they wage war, physical war. Verse 33, guess what? It's during the time of Rome. Read that again, verse 33. Daniel chapter 11, verse 33. Read. And they that understand among the people shall instruct many. That's during the time of the apostles also. During the time of Christ and the disciples, you understand? And during the time of the apostles after Christ left the earth and went back to the Father. Read. Yet they shall fall by the sword. They shall what? 
They shall fall by the sword. They shall what? They shall fall by the sword. Luke 21 verse 24 real quick. They shall fall by the edge of the sword. I'm showing you different time periods. Verse 32 is during the time of the Greeks. Marathias, then his sons, Judah Maccabee and his brothers after him. Verse 33 is during the time of what? Rome. Read. Luke 21 verse 24. Come on. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword. The Israelites shall fall by the edge of the sword. And shall be led away captive into all nations. We would be led away captives into all nations. This is during the time of 70 AD when our temple was completely destroyed. Read. And Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles. Meaning somebody else will, will inhabit our land. Come on. Until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. Until their time of rulership is over. Okay. Which is about to happen now soon. Okay. Read. Go back. Daniel 11, verse 33 again. Daniel chapter 11, verse 33. Come on. And they that understand among the people Read. shall instruct many. Come on. Yet they shall fall by the sword. They shall fall by the edge of the sword, and Jerusalem shall be trodden down by the Gentiles. Read. And by flame. And by what? And by flame. Because they will set Jerusalem on fire. Come on. By captivity. By what? By captivity. By slavery. The transatlantic, the sub Saharan, the Silk Road. Okay. And by spoil. And by what? And by spoil. And by spoil. They spoiled us. They robbed us. Read. Many days. Many days. So meaning what? From the time of the transatlantic slave trade, 1619, many days. To what year? 1969. 350 years. Then the East Israel will begin to wake up. 1619 to 1969, that's the many days. 350 years. You understand? Go ahead. Now, when they shall fall, and when they shall fall, come on, they shall be hoping with a little help. With a little help now. Brothers, everything okay? Yes, sir. Okay, read the verse again, verse 34. Daniel chapter 11, verse 34. Okay, come on. Now, when they shall fall, when they shall fall, when they shall fall, okay, come on, they shall be hoping with a little help. And they shall be hoping with a little help. Meaning when we fell by the edge of the sword, we went into captivity by spoil. Many days, 350 years. Let's get there. Daniel 7, 25. Let's stay in Daniel. Daniel chapter 7, verse 25. Watch this. Daniel chapter 7, verse 25. The many days is going to be explained here. Come on. And he shall speak great words against the Most High. Okay, read. And shall wear out the saints of the Most High. In slavery, they're going to wear us out. Read. And think to change times and laws. Read. And they shall be given into his hand. We're going to be given into the hand of our enemies many days. How long? Until a time. Until a time. And times. And times, plural. And the dividing of time. 350 years. From 1619 to what year? To 1969, which is when Israel will begin to wake up. You understand? Go back. Daniel chapter 11, verse 32 again. Daniel chapter 11, verse 32. Read 33, 33. Verse 33. Go ahead. And they that understand among the people shall instruct many. Go ahead. Yet they shall fall by the sword. Read. And by flame. Read. By captivity. Uh -huh. And by spoil many days. That a day and many, what? He says, what, 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 did you, what, what did we read in Daniel 7? I don't want to butcher it. It says what? It says, they shall be given unto his hand until a time and times and the dividing of time. 350 years. Okay? Read. Verse 34. Come on. Now when they shall fall, uh -huh. they shall be hoping with a little help. Guess what? When they shall fall in captivity, guess what? We shall be hoping with a little help. You understand? Give me that in Malachi 4. Verse 5. When we shall fall in captivity, we shall be hoping with a little help. Read that. Malachi 4 verse 4. Malachi chapter 4 verse 4. Come on. Remember ye the law of Moses. Remember ye the law of Moses. Come on. My servant. Read. Which I commanded unto him in order. Read. For all Israel. Uh -huh. With the statutes and judgment. Come on. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet. Read. Before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. So the help, the little help is Elijah coming back in these last days before the Lord returns. Come on. And he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children. That's what Elijah would do. Elijah will come and turn the heart of the fathers to the children. Read. And the heart of the children to their fathers. Go ahead. Lest I come 
and smite the earth with a curse. Before the Lord returns, the Lord will send Elijah the prophet. That's the little help. He says, they shall be hoping with the little help, Elijah. This is the reason why. They, what you see here is the, is the fact that Elijah came and left. So that, whole, that little help is what you see here. This is the fruit of Elijah coming back on the earth. You understand? Now, go back, Daniel. Daniel 11. Okay, Daniel chapter 11. Read verse 34 again. Daniel chapter 11 verse 34. Read. Now when they shall fall, they shall be hoping with a little help. Go ahead. But many shall cleave to them with flattery. You say that many shall cleave to they, the, the prophets that will wake up with flatteries. Meaning there are those of our forefathers that are going to what? That are going to fall by flatteries because why? Having loved this present world. That's what he's talking This is talking about the last days now. Where this is the time period we're in right now. That's what he's talking about. Okay? Go ahead. And some of them of understanding shall fall. And it says, and some of them of understanding, meaning those that have understanding among us, they're going to fall. Not because by flatteries. No, no. Meaning the Lord is going to take them away in this truth. Keeping the commandments. Read again. Daniel chapter 11 verse 35. Read. And some of them of understanding he shall says, fall. He says, and some of them of understanding shall fall. To do what? To try them. Stop right there. And some of them shall fall. Some of them that have understanding. He didn't say all. He says some. To try them. Give me that in Matthew 23, 34. Matthew 23, 34. Watch this. Matthew chapter 23, verse 34. Come on. Wherefore, behold, I send unto you prophets. I send unto you prophets, read. And wise men. And wise men, read. And scribes. Uh -huh. And some of them. And some of them, some of these prophets and scribes that the Lord said he will send unto us. He shall kill and crucify. He shall kill and crucify. He says, some of them shall fall. They are going to be put to death for keeping, teaching, and obeying the commandments of the Most High. Read. And some of them shall be scourged in the synagogue. They're going to scourge us in their synagogue. Come on. And persecute them from city to city. They're going to persecute us from city to city. Meaning we're going to be on the run. The time will come. Okay. Read. That upon you may come all the righteous blood shed upon the earth. Okay, I'm going to jump there. Now I'm going to cut off a, lot, a couple of scriptures. Go back to Daniel 11. Read verse 35 now. Daniel chapter 11 verse 35. Read. And some of them of understanding shall fall. Uh -huh. To try them. To do what? To try them. To try them. So those that are going to be put to death in this truth, keeping the commandments, righteous, doing righteous in the sight of the Lord, they are going to be taken away to try them. Give me that in Wisdom of Solomon 3 verse 4. Real quick, watch this. Now this is the war. This is the war before the war. The war, the war is World War Three. The war that we're reading about now is the spiritual war that we must be ready for for the final war that's coming on this earth. Prepare yourself. Read what you got. Come on. Daniel. 11 verse 35 again. Daniel chapter 11 verse 35. Read. And some of them of understanding shall fall. Uh -huh. to, try to try them, right? Wisdom of Solomon 3 verse 4. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 3 verse 4. For though they be punished in the sight of men. Though they be punished in the sight of men by what? Wicked Israelites. Read. Yet is their hope full of immortality. Our hope is full of immortality because we're going to get the kingdom of heaven on earth and live forever. Read. And having been a little chastised. A little chastised that's been put to death in this truth. Read. They shall be greatly rewarded. They shall be greatly rewarded. Come on. For God proved them and found them worthy for himself. You see that thing? How? Next verse. As gold in the furnace has been tried. As gold is as gold in the furnace has been as he tried them, come on. And received them as a burnt offering. Meaning death. You're gonna have to die in this truth. Not all, but some. Because guess what? You are the you become the sweet smelling savor to the most high. Understand that thing. Okay? Give me that in second Ezra chapter 16, verse 68. Read that quickly. Second Ezra chapter 16, verse 68. Come on. For behold, the burning wrath of the great multitude Read. is kindled over you. Uh-huh. Over you, prophets. Read. 
and they shall take away certain of you. They're going to take away certain of you. That was some of you shall they kill. Read. And feed you, uh -huh. being idle, with things offered unto idols. Idolatry, meaning being, called, being, being distracted. Come on. And they that consent unto them shall he have in derision. He's going he gonna to have them in derision. Come on. And in reproach. Read. And trodden under foot. We're going to be trodden under foot because of our people that hate this truth. Read. For there shall be in every place and in the next cities a great insulation upon those that fear the Lord. You see that thing? Upon the disciples. Come on. They shall be like mad men. Mm -hmm. The people, our people are going to be like mad men. Read. Sparing none. They're not going to spare us or our children. Come on. But still spoiling and destroying those that fear the Lord. You see that thing? Read. For they shall waste and take away their goods. Uh -huh. And cast them out of their houses. Read. Then shall they be known. Who am I chosen? Uh -huh. And they shall be tried as the gold in the, in the fire. Read. Here. That, that's it on there. That's it on there. Keep going. Keep going. I'm sorry. Here. Oh, ye, my beloved, Ray. say the Lord, Come on. behold, the days of trouble are at hand, Ray. but I will deliver you from the same. You see what the Lord is saying? He said, don't be afraid of these trials that are coming. I'm going to deliver you. That's what he's saying right there. Okay? Now, let me see, let me see, let me see. Go back. Daniel 9. Daniel 11, verse 35. One more again. I'm almost done. I'm almost done. I'm Daniel. not going to go into the heavy stuff. Oh, gosh. Come on. Read that. Ish, I will have to cut out a lot of scriptures here because of what's going on. Come on, verse 35. Daniel chapter 11, verse 35. Read. And some of them of understanding shall fall uh -huh. to try them. To try them. And to purge. And to purge. To purge those that don't believe. John 6, verse 64. Come on. John chapter 6, verse 64. Come on. But there are some of you that believe not. But there are some of you that believe not. That's why it says to purge. To page those that don't believe. Because there are those going to be those among us that don't believe. This will happen to page them out. Come on. For Jesus knew from the beginning uh -huh. who they were that believed not. You see that thing? Read. And who should betray him. And who should betray him. He knew it. Go back to Daniel. Chapter 11 verse 35 again. Daniel chapter 11 verse 35. Read. And some of them of understanding shall fall. Read. To try them. Uh -huh. And to purge. Read. And to make them white. And to make them white. Even to the time of the end. Stop right there. To make them white even to the time of the end. Give me Revelation 19, 14. Revelation chapter 19, verse 14. Come on. And the armies which were in heaven followed him. Upon Read. White horses. Come on. Clothed in fine linen. Clothed in fine linen. White and clean. You see that? White and clean. Come on. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword. Read. That with it he should smite the nations. And he shall rule them with the rod of iron. Read verse 14 one more again. I'm sorry. Read verse 8. Then jump down to 14. Revelation chapter 19 verse 8. Come on. And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen. In fine linen. That's Israel. Come on. Clean and white. Clean and white. For the fine linen. For the fine linen that is clean and white. Is the righteousness of saints. Is the what now? Is the righteousness of saints. Is the righteousness of saints. Verse 14. Verse 14. Read. And the armies which were in heaven mm -hmm. followed him upon white horses. Read. Clothed in fine linen, uh -huh. white and clean. You see that thing? Because it is the righteousness of saints. Go back to Daniel 9. Daniel 11. Verse 35 again. Daniel chapter 11 verse 35. Come on. And some of them of understanding shall fall. Read. To try them. Read. To purge. Uh -huh. And to make them white. Come on. Even to the time of the end. Uh huh. Because it is yet for a time appointed. For it is yet for a time appointed. That time appointed is now. Right now, the time we're living in, that's the time appointed. That's the time we're living in right now. We. This is the prophecy. This is what we read in verse 35. This is the time period we're in right now. Understand that thing. Okay, so this right here is the war before the war. We must be prepared for it. You understand? I wanted to go over the rest of the, the war, the actual war now that we're going to go in because it is a spiritual war. That's the war we're in. The war before the war. The Feast of Dedication 2022. All praise to the Most High. Let's break bread in the name of Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. For I have received of the Lord, that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, to pray. 
and when he had given thanks, he prayed it and said, Take it. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup, when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye, as often as he drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as he eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself and so let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. In the name of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Oh, praise. praise the Lord. Oh, praise to the Most High. Oh, praises. Oh, praises. That's our class for tonight. I'll do part two, brothers. Yes, sir. I'll do part two, brothers. Yes, sir. All right.